Hi, in this tutorial I will show you the basics of using Premiere Pro CC. I will try to keep this video as short as possible, so let's start. When you first open up Premiere Pro, you'll see this welcome window and you can create a new project by clicking right here. Then you can change the location and the name of your project and you can see that there are general options and scratch disk options. So if you have a graphics card which is capable of GPU acceleration, you will be able to select it right here. But if you don't, you'll be forced to using um, software only. Then we have the video and audio display format and the capture format. But in this tutorial, we won't be capturing anything using Premiere Pro, so we don't need to change that. And then we have the scratch disks. If you have a separate hard drive or an SSD, then set all these to that SSD. If you don't have any, then just leave this on same as project. Once you're done configuring this, click OK. And the default workspace will show up. Um, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to configure Premiere Pro. So go to Preferences, Appearance, and right here you can change the look of Premiere Pro. You can either choose a lighter color or a darker color. Then um, go to Autosave and make sure that you enable it. If you're using Premiere Pro on a low-end computer, it might crash and you'll lose everything that you made. Then go to Memory and make sure that you optimize your rendering for performance and that you give Premiere Pro as much memory as you can. The minimum that you should use with Premiere Pro is 4GB and if you have less you should probably consider upgrading your RAM. Once you're done with this, click OK and now we're going to import some footage. So click on file, import and then select your footage and then just drop it right here into the timeline and this will automatically create a sequence for you. If you hover your mouse over the thumbnail you'll see that you can scroll through the video. Then let's take a look at these panels right here. So we have the media browser which you can use to find your footage. Then we have the info and you need to select a clip to show its info right here. Then we have the effects panel, um, the markers panel and history panel. And the history panel is very useful when you need to undo multiple actions. Then let's move on to um, this area right here. We have the source um, monitor. You can trim your footage right here before you import it into the timeline. Then we have the effect controls panel. And with this clip selected, we can see all of the effects that are applied to its video and to its audio. Then we have the audio clip mixer and the metadata. Um, now let's move on to this area. Um, this is your program monitor and this will display the sequence that is currently in the timeline. So when you're watching your clips, make sure that you don't set this to full unless you have a powerful computer. And now let's move on to the timeline. So right here you can see the timeline display options. You can select what's being displayed in your timeline. Um, then we have the linked selection and the snap feature. Um, and right here we have the toggle track output um, and the toggle track lock. So when you lock your track, you disable any editing on it. Um, then right here we have the mute track and solo. And again, we have the track lock. Now I'm going to show you um, these two features. So when you disable linked selection, you can move 
your video and your audio separately. And when it's on, you can move both your video and your audio together. Then we have the snap feature and when it's off, you can just move your clip however you like. But when we turn it on, it will start snapping to other clips or to the playhead. Now let's talk about the markers. So for example, I'm going to copy this clip by pressing Ctrl C and then I'm going to paste it uh, by pressing Ctrl V. If you have a second guy that's going to edit this and you want this cut to occur earlier, you can just set a marker right there and then you can go to your markers panel and write a note and when he opens up the project, he'll know what he needs to do. To delete markers, just go right here um, and click on clear all markers. Now let's move on to these tools. So we have the selection tool and you can use it to trim your footage and to move it in the timeline. Then we have the track selection tool and it will select um, all the clips on your timeline from a given point. So if you click on this video, it will select this one and all the other clips that are behind it. Um, then we have the ripple edit tool and it will trim your clip and it will move um, other clips in the timeline to compensate for this movement. So if I just use the selection tool to trim this, you see that there's this empty space and when I use the ripple edit tool, it will automatically move these two clips. Then we have the rolling edit tool. And we can use the rolling edit tool to adjust um, an edit point between two clips without affecting the rest of the timeline. Then we have the rate stretch tool, which we can use to slow down or to speed up our footage. We can undo that by pressing Ctrl Z. Um, then we have the razor tool and the razor tool is used to cut your clip. Then we have the slip tool, which will move the in point and the out point of a selected clip without affecting the rest of the timeline. Um, then we have the slide tool and the slide tool will move the selected clip while it automatically adjusts the other clips to compensate for the movement. Then we have the pen tool and the pen tool is used to create um, opacity keyframes right here on your video and to create um, volume keyframes on your audio. So I'm going to create two keyframes like that and then I'm going to move this one down there and we can see that I created a nice fade out. Um, then we have the hand tool and you can use the hand tool to move around the timeline. And the last one is the zoom tool which you can use to zoom into your timeline but I rarely ever use it because you can do the same thing like this. So now let's move on to effects. So when we click on the effects panel, we can see um, audio effects and transitions and video effects and transitions. And for example, I'm going to apply a fast color corrector to one of our clips. And I'm just going to modify um, this right here and we can see that I created a nice look and to disable your um, effect you can just click on the effects icon right here and that will enable or disable the effect that you applied. So let's create a simple movement using the motion effect. So I want this video to move from the left to the right. So I'm just going to slightly scale it up and then I'm going to click on the stopwatch to create a position keyframe. 
I'm going to move this video to the left and then I'm going to move the playhead and I'm going to create a second keyframe and then I'm going to move this video to the right. And when I play it back, we can see that I created a nice movement. So when you're done adjusting your clips, you can move on to exporting your footage. So to select the part of the sequence that will be exported, you can click on mark in and then right here you can click on mark out and it's really simple to adjust this. Um, then before we move on to exporting a video clip, I'm just going to show you how to export a frame from your video. So just click on this um, camera um, icon right here and you can export any frame that you want. Um, there's several different formats and this is very useful when you want to create a thumbnail for your video. And we're done, so let's export our footage. So click on File, Export, Media. And the first thing that we want to change is the source range and we want to set it to sequence in slash out. There's also three more um, different options. You can render out the entire sequence, your work area or a custom range from your sequence. Um, then let's move on to export settings. Um, I'm going to use H.264 and you can see that there's a lot of presets that come with Premiere Pro. So for example, I'm going to use the YouTube um, 1080 preset. Um, let's see, it's right here. And then I want to change some things on the video tab. I want to change this level to 5.1 and that will change our frame rate. So I'm going to set it back to 29 frames per second. Um, then you have your bitrate settings and if you have a low-end computer um, you want to use um, variable bitrate one pass but if you have time you can use um, two pass because it will take a longer time to render. Then you can change your target bitrate and you can see the estimated file size right here. And once you're done configuring your video settings, you can move on to the audio tab. And if you're um, rendering HD footage, don't go under 256 kilobytes per second. Once you're done with all of this, um, you can change the output name and the location, and then just click on export and the rendering will start. So I hope that I helped you and that you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments. If you want to see more tutorials like this one, then please subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you next time.